Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's off map video, we are bringing back a semi-familiar loadout that not many people have used since released, but offers a lot of interesting interactions. The Tommy's Matchbook, an Action Warwick setup, may be familiar to a number of players who enjoy firing their ARs for a near infinite amount of time and also pairs really well with Tommy's increased damage when it overheats. However, since Tommy's buff allows us to apply Scorch damage now, the following setup allows us to cause a near scorch and ignition buildup every few seconds. With a pseudo subclass, this can be amazing, but with a void subclass, you can take it a step further. It's time to give Action Warwick a try if you love everything ARs. To start, you're going to want to have Bastion, where casting your super grants overshields to your allies. Casting a barricade also grants you and allies an overshield, while also regenerating lost shielding. Then you want Offensive Bulwark, where upon having an overshield, your grenades charge faster, you have increased melee range and damage, and melee from the blows extended duration of overshields. The setup is designed for keeping our build alive and kicking while using Tommy's matchbook at full. The pros to this is that with the amount of damage reduction being applied here, we should be able to navigate a lot of the damage elsewhere, making full use of Tommy's at max overheat, compared to using a weapon without the many reduction applied. The fragments used are Echo Persistence, where Void Abilities applied to you, such as Overshields, have increased duration. Echo Explosion, where Void Ability Final Blows causes targets to explode. Echo Vigilance, where defeating targets while your shields are down grant you a temporary overshield. And Echo Starvation, where picking up an normal power grants you Devour. We want to focus on max survivability for the build, so that we can fully utilize Tommy's after effects and in the process of us not getting killed. Fragments such as Persistence, Vigilance and Starvation will help with giving you a boost to health regen upon getting kills, while also giving you a reserve overshield in case things get really bad. This is most suitable as the aspects being used will enhance our ability recovery while also giving us X amount of overshield to really keep the build going. Of course, Solo with Restoration is effective as well, but I find that Void offers a lot more in terms of on-the-go and on-demand protection. For the mods and stats section, as we are using Action Warvig, we should have plenty of freedom to pick here in terms of what is best to use and invest in for the entirety of the build. Resilience at tier 6 to 10 is ideal if you want a build that is suitable for low tier difficulty or higher tier difficulty. We have ours at tier 6 simply because of the adequate amount of healing and overshield being applied should be enough for us to tank a number of hits before reaching critical health. Although Tommy's is being used, having things like Devour on hand can help a lot with the build in terms of survival, and from here you can then increase or decrease your resilience depending on how you feel. You can add on the Fun of Endurance mod if you want to reach tier 9 to 10 quickly, but overall the stat is down to you. Discipline is at tier 7, but we're making use of a number of benefits from our subclass alone. The Offensive Bulwark aspect will be granting us a steady regen rate of grenade energy every time we have our overshots up and running, which, when combined with the Funnel Focus mod for plus 30 towards our current stat, means that we can get a tier 10 stat with faster ability regen on top of it. As we are using magnetic grenades, our cooldown is quite fast compared to using anything like vortex grenades, and this here will allow us an easier to use time and flexibility option for engaging fights when you need it most. In many ways, you can use this to your advantage to play around with grenade choice since our aspects will allow us to and we aren't using any debuff grenades unless we really want to. For armor charges, having charged up will extend how many armor charges we can hold on to by plus one, while stacks and stacks will allow you to have two armor charges instead of one. Combining this with solo weapon surge times two will increase a weapon's damage by 17%. Time dilation will help this further by providing an extra five seconds to all time-based mods and having solo siphon, firepower, reaper, and powerful friends mod will make getting charged with light very easy. After that, you should then be left with a few slots to mix and match how you please. Now lastly for weapons, we have the Tommy's Matchbook Exotic. The following weapon has always been slept on to use in a number of content because of the cons it sometimes provides. To start, the weapon has recently been buffed to apply Scorch build up on targets once you get overheated, which is amazing when you combine it with a solar subclass fragment. This, with extra damage boost, allows the weapon to really make short work of enemies and PvP players with ease. However, becoming overheated reduces your health down to critical, which in a number of activities is a big no-no. This is why, if you want the benefits of the weapon, 
you must take healing in mind, which is why adding on Devour to the following exotic makes it very much worth its weight in gold. Of course, Tommy's can be swapped out for other exotic ARs of your pick, as the build allows freedom of choice here. It's just the following with all its pros makes investing into it a lot more worthwhile as of now. After that, having the machine gun with a build will be also suitable for when you need a little more bang to your buck. The combination with Substance and Rampage, for example, makes it a good heavy weapon to use against bosses and for simple ad clearing, although Substance with the build does kind of make it a bit redundant. However, since the fallen weapon can get many rolls and is craftable now, you can create a perfect version of this variant however you like. On the other hand, weapons like Circular Logic and the Swarm are too easy to get weapons and quite easy to grind for that generally any player from veterans to new players can get from their respected activities. The Infinite Anything builds are always going to be fun and maddening experience for players to get involved in and the following is no different to the many versions we have covered. Axioms are simple to use and only have one purpose in life and that is to rain absolute havoc with whatever machine gun or AR you have. The most popular combo to be seen with Exotic is Sweet Business and even now that combo is going strong with its newly updated form. However, not many people talk about how good the Tommy's matchbook combo is with the following Exotic, especially since Exotic has now received a buff. Having around 100 plus rounds in your magazine for Tommy's is great for letting loose and doing relative DPS against most bosses, mini bosses and generally whatever. However, being able to inflict non-stop scorch and ignition on a target makes it quite destructive for a bit of kit. Although using solo would be most suitable and make the most sense for the enhanced scorch and ignition applications, Void allows us to recover quickly from critical blows that in most cases would end up killing us in the process. Now, this is important to note as Tommy has the ability to get health back from kills, but unless you are quick with doing so, you'll end up getting killed more often in Legend and Above content when you don't need it most. When combining the weapon, Exotic and Subclass all together, you get a sort of minigun that seems to rarely end and has the ability to ignite targets of all types, causing what I would consider the greatest war crime to mankind as of yet. And that's the power of the build when you fully use it, as you have infinite health, infinite ammo and very high amount of overshield to keep you going from start to finish. I would probably say this is better than using Sweet Business only because of that extra level of damage being done when you're overheated, but this does come with its faults. One issue I didn't cover is how weak the setup is against other elemental shielding in game. Now in some cases once you are overheated you can get around this quite easily, but in other cases even when you're overheated it may not be enough to use. This is why it's important to make full use of your kit to help you navigate these kind of areas. Overall, this is a splendid build for those who really love their ARs or machine guns and can't get enough of the infinite ammo feel at their helm. But what do you think? So there we have it. I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all. And I hope to see you again soon.